show match. Bing 2015 challenge. Sorry about that intro. Yeah. But hey, we are brought to you by Rocket, MSI, Twitch, Newegg, Jinx, and Blizzard. Delta Radio the Berg moving on to the final weeks of the HSL spring season. So Blitzbot VT said we needed more games, and we're gonna get some with the number one ranked player in NA so far. Killing all day, going off against the veteran of the show matches, Snipper. We'll be bringing you in the other contenders as two new players will be coming up to the show matches today. Nair versus Tonky Castron. It's like Sneaky Castro, but something different. Coming to play as the last players today. So it's week nine, the shop is still around. So if, if you can hashtag buy a shirt, get a HSL hug over at the Hearthstone Star League shop which is hsstarleague.com slash shop. We'll be getting into this one soon. Don't be late for the docket or you might get rocky. Then I think we're about to start this one up. It's L3 with the one, the only Blitzbot. Hello, man. How's it been? What's going on? Pretty good. Pretty good. Just uh, lots of tournaments today and lots of action. Lots of action. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, players playing today. Over in the world of Hearthstone, Seed Source Top Cup, and there's also the ESL thing My happening right now, right? Tear you apart. Yeah, and also the uh, LCS 2 thing. <laughs> oh. I think we can hear a blood spot, but it's, it's becoming a little body, if anything. Uh, you good? Is it better now? Somewhat. It, it's going in and out. Blood spot is trying to play around with a new mic, so yeah. It's interesting. Uh, it says that I am. Oh no. I'm gonna have to leave this matchup, but we'll be right back to it. So, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about introductions in a little bit. I was gonna say this matchup it's Mech Mage versus Druid, if I believe correctly. No, Priest. Um, what do you think about this matchup? Let's see. Priest versus uh, Mech Mage? Well, it. Uh... Depends on uh, essentially how much pressure the uh, mech mage can put on early on, and whether the uh, mech mage runs mechanical yetis in addition to the piloted shredders. We'll see how it happens. Right now, Light and Naru is going to be tamed up onto the. Weird place. Okay, so he's gonna be tamed up onto himself. Should be able to heal out that. Plus, probably the pilot sweater is gonna straight into the wild power mancer, I would say. But good tempo play coming up with the wild power mancer, taking out two priority targets at the same time, developing board. All right. Yeah. Well, the um. The issue is that it's a very difficult uh, matchup for the priest unless they can um, stabilize really uh, quickly. Like, um, I was surprised that uh, Killing All Day didn't uh, put down the mech warper earlier, but I assume he drew it uh, a bit late. And the Lothar was just a good drop to put on just to. Uh, Just to have that big body on the board and sort of deny any sort of uh, stabilizing effect of spells from the priest. Interesting. Uh, I believe the priest right now is still sort of in lead, but the fireball and Antonite has been drawn off for Kelly one day. He's gonna have a little bit of pressure play coming up pretty soon, and especially with the Lotha already developed, and you get a secret as well. Beautiful, beautiful stuff coming up from killing all day. 
Yeah, like um, Mad Scientist is like one of the best shredder drops for McMage to get because it essentially acts like draw uh, an extra card from your deck and play it, which is like so good for the McMage. Definitely so good and oof. Such a tough target to get the mirror entity. Uh, would you play the mirror, or would you play it into that target? Would you play the recombinator oh, first or something to try to bait out something else differently? Ooh, this looks like a power play coming out from McMage. Well, uh, right now, um, I'd just like to have some board presence. Like the Cabal, you know, the four or five body is, you know, a rather large amount of stats, and you know. You want something to be able to deal with, you know, the low feb and the uh, mech warpers, but, you know, Anoyatron is very annoying for priests to deal with, you know, because they don't have any sort of ping abilities, so they have to use um, stuff like uh, Shadow Word Pain or a Cabal. Here we see, ooh, a very... Uh, a very cute play with the Shadow Manus and Recombobulator. Very uh, reminiscent of uh, Colento's Priest deck. A very hashtag worth right there. Uh, Antonis probably could still come out. It's not a bad play in the sense that, yeah, you'll only probably get one Fireball at this moment because there is enough to kill her on the board. So probably not the safest of plays, but it's a thing that could happen. We do see some trading going out, and Antonidas still coming down. Time rewinder on Antonidas, probably. Now, on, on the uh, low there, though. Um, huh. Would you have done that, or would you try to save up the Antonidas from that one? Well, basically, uh, killing all day was sort of... Betting on the fact that Snippert wouldn't have a uh, Shadow Work Death in his hand. But unfortunately for Killing All Day, he did have the uh, the Shadow Work Death. And also, he wanted to uh, basically have a pseudo heal on the Lothab and activate the Lothab's Battle Cry yet again. But uh, here we see the uh, priest sort of stabilizing out. You know, the mech mage is running out of resources. Antonidas was removed. They, they don't really have a lot of big threats left. And, you know, the priest can just, you know, trade and then heal up all their stuff. And again, and it's drawing even more cards with the Northshire and healing. I must consider. Healing I, I like cards and press, putting pressure. Loving that part. Keep on. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see Snippert here just go face instead yeah. of um, trading. Since um, he has the Light Warden, which, you know, has to be dealt with from the uh, Mage's side of the, the field. You know, if they let that live for you know, a couple more turns, that could grow into like a 9 2. Yeah, I don't know why he is kind of now. I guess he's just kind of playing it like arena wise. Making sure he can clear board and making sure he doesn't lose his board to a flame strike, which some mech mages I've seen kind of run, which is still not that good for them anyway. But I mean, you have card advantage. You have all the time in the world for Snippert, so I'm not surprised to see him play very safe and cautious. I just don't know if that's the best way of doing everything. Yeah, with the whole holy Nova draw, that's just really good since. You know, he can clear the Cogmaster, heal his life up, you know, just to evade those Fireball and Frostbolt reach, and it's just, it's, it's just very difficult for the Mech Mage to come back at this point. Mm -hmm. Especially losing their uh, one out with the Antonidas, like, what can you do, right? It's, it's a race to get down below 18 health, but is it going to be enough? That is probably what Killing All Day is asking himself right now. And it's looking like it's gonna be a clear from Snipper. That's killing all day, is just taking down. There's another fireball out, maybe a power blast and two pings. Will it be enough to try to get the win from there? 
Probably not. No. Nope. At this point, the game is pretty much decided. Um, I would say that, you know, the time rewinder, if it was sort of another spare part, you know, like an attack plus or a freeze or, you know, a spell like the one it had, it would have been a lot better, but just the time rewinder is just so awkward for mech mage to use. And it, it could work with like, uh, like, it can't even work with, um. Yeah, there's not a lot. Goblin of Last Mage is yeah. like, but like the only, like the only two cards with Battle Cries that you actually want to use the Time Rewinder on is a uh, Lothab and uh, Goblin Blast Mage. But outside of that, the only other way you'd use the Time Rewinder is as a pseudo heal, which isn't really that great in Mech Mage because. You kind of want to be pushing for damage to the face and not for, you know, trading and healing up your uh, creatures. So, as we see here, the priest was able to stabilize and just outvalue the mech mage. Yeah, Stepper played it really, really strongly. Um, the mid game clear off of uh, just so much damage was enough to make sure that he can keep board present, but taking out the Antoninus. Unfortunately, because the lift of grab brought back up, it just it was well, not enough right there. So game one, going over the also, uh, Go for it. also another problem with the the timing wander is that it's a huge loss of tempo when you use it, because unlike say shadow step, where you know it costs less mana to play the card again, you have to replay the card for its full mana value. So unless you're getting a huge amount of you know, value back from it. It's kind of an awful card to play. However, it is useful. I like running Clockwork Gnomes in uh, Face Hunter because you have so many charge minions that, you know, later on in the game, you can Wolf Rider use a Time Rewinder or Wolf Rider attack, then use Time Rewinder and then uh, attack again with it. Which is uh, a lot of, which is a uh, a way how I've gotten a surprise lethal uh, a lot of times. With a uh, wolf rider on top of a timer one under. That's pretty good. Yeah, or just uh, any charge minion, you know, yeah. Leroy or... Arcane Golem. For example, Arcane Golem or Huffer, you know, everybody's favorite beast. <laughs> Always Huffer. Mm. Huffer boys are not going to be included in this one, but we do have the injured Blade Master in Circle Clan. Did he just play that already for Snipper? Yep, Circle of Healing and uh, Blade Master is one of the strongest uh, minion combinations. You get a 4-7 out for only 3 mana, and that's like... Well, if you look at cards with stats the same as that, they're all like 5 mana cards. Or, I guess you could say Salty Dog is a 7-4, but I'd much rather have a 4-7 uh, over a 7-4. Days where math is equal to other sides mm -hmm. of the math, but not really equal to that itself. This is a day that we see Salty Dog maybe be viable. Although, it, it could be viable. I mean, Raynad is still a thing. He, he won a game, right? In the C Story Cup, maybe? No, not really. Ray Raynad can be viable, but uh, I don't think Salty Dog will, will be. <laughs> oh, tough times for Salty Dog. We do see the uh, trade out over. Ooh. Interesting to proc that already. I mean, we did have a silence on the Light Warden, so that's not surprising. Pyromancer, Power Shield. Would you heal. Oh. Okay. It just heals itself, or heals. Yeah, heals that. Would you really leave your Pyromancer that vulnerable, though? Yeah, versus a face hunter, two health or one health doesn't really matter. Mm. Except in the case of a knife juggler unleash the uh, hounds combo. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if an explosive trap is played, whether the minion is at one health or two health, it's gonna die regardless. Mm. But speaking of unleash the hounds knife juggler combo, oh, and we have the uh, sniper juggler. 
hitting out uh, only the minions. It's a pretty bad juggler. He should have just went base. <laughs> <laughs> Shadow Madness is going to be able to take out one. It's going to recombobulate the next one. Problem. Eh, it's not too bad. He's actually hold on the circle of healing. Would you hold on the circle of healing because you have the alkanized soul priest at the moment? Oh yeah, in case of another unleashed of hounds combo, mm -hmm. or or you can just trade your, with your minions and then heal them back up without using your hero power. Because like at this point, I'd be using. Every turn, I'd be using the hero power to heal myself back up. You just want to stay as high as possible. So yeah, we're probably going to see Snipper just backing off from attacking until uh, Killing All Day puts out uh, more minions. Or he just keeps on going face. And another 5 damage all possible coming up for next turn. Snipper's running out of time in this instance. It's gonna lesser heal, put the injury blade master up. That means he's gonna put the circle of healing down for sure, which also means he's gonna proc. Uh, he's not procking. Uh -oh. He he has an ex he has a Harrison Jones in the deck, mm -hmm. so he might want to try waiting for the Harrison Jones before giving um, killing all day the uh, bonus charge on his weapon. But he has to start putting some pressure soon. <laughs> because versus Hunter, it's just not about surviving. It's like you also have to kill them off too. Otherwise, their hero power just finishes you off. Ooh, the uh, Northshire cleric is a uh, pretty good draw. Interesting draw because we're gonna see a lot of cards drawn in. Is it seven health yeah. left though? And he has. Well, he got the card he needs really right now. Oh, that's even better card too. Oh yeah, Light of the Naru is really good. Hmm. Uh, Belcher and I'm gonna see Light of the Naru as well. No. So double <laughs> kill command would have won that game if he got it. Didn't want to play that. Instead, he's just gonna get Iron Scout. That, that is That's the lethal, I think. <laughs> Face Hunter will always tell you it's well lethal. Played. Many lethals. Yeah, instead of the, um... Game. Well, I don't yeah, think it really I... mattered, right? Because he I don't think with the Light of the Naru, if he, uh... was able to, uh... Survive past that turn because he still has. Well, if he did Light of the Naru and then. Yeah, there's just no way. There's just no way. Because even if he Light of the Naru and held back from proccing the explosive trap, um, he still had the Worgen and he also probably. also had a. Uh, what's it? A 66% chance to get. Either Leok or Huffer for more damage mm -hmm. to the face. Mm -hmm. Let the hunt begin. I must protect the wild. So yeah, there probably wasn't a way. Once the kill command kind of got drawn, it, there was really no way of doing this. So it's unfortunate. It was basically was just hope to not. Okay. Sorry, what? It was basically really hoping that um, there was no owl for the Belcher. Yeah, no, Al for the Belcher to make sure that he didn't actually get killed. Unfortunately, he got killed, and there was Al. Double whammy off of that one. You see the uh, game going to be started back up. It is going to be Hunter versus Druid. Pretty good, s smart play, and in the uh, old format with the best of three. Remember, this is the best of three, last hero standing format. So, we're still going to be seeing the same decks. Possibly, but this is the last matchup. 1-1 one, one on the game score for both players right now. Again, killing all day. Unfortunately, just dropped seven ranks right when I said that they were he was he was rank one, but he was rank one and he did get rank one mostly with face hunter. So you too can get rank one status with the face hunter. 
As long as you're willing to put in the time. <laughs> the literal, literal hours of going face. Keepo. That's that's a mork. Smoke all day. Smoke all day. Uh, okay, so we do see Shade and Wrath coming here. All right. It's just because he wants to mitigate damage on board at the moment. But would you have uh, held off and used Violet Teacher instead? Well, the thing is, Shade grows into a super large threat really fast. And oftentimes, the face hunter will have to use their owl on the shade just to, you know, stop themselves from dying. The keeper is a good draw because just to be able to nullify drawing a trap from the mad scientist is just so important. Without, you know, drawing the trap from the mad scientist, it just takes away so much tempo from them. From the face hunter. And ooh, that's a very, very lucky juggle coming from uh, killing all day. I think this is um, Silent Storm's Druid list with Toshley and Double Violet Teachers. Ooh, yep. Taunt. The Taunt Good. Spare part is Good. practically the uh, best one he could have hoped for. It's gonna get an Iron Beak out, and so I'm not surprised to see if Toshley takes the Iron Beak out. Because I don't know if Dr. Boom is going to be played next turn. He, he's at 19 health, so that's not too bad of a life total for Snipper. And especially since he has Druid of Claw as well. But yeah, it's still kind of scary at the moment where he's in the gap. Would you I would have taken the extra damage truth in that trade, because there's a beast on board. Um, you know I mean? but even though with kill command, he's still pretty safe. Um, like he's at 18 HP, he has boom in hand. Face Hunter only has one card in hand, he has the taunt spare part. Like this turn he can, um, play Dr. Boom and taunt him up, which is just so good. Oh, and Belcher too on top of that. Like, you're just gonna have taunt after taunt after taunt coming out, and it's just so difficult for the face hunter to deal <laughs> with that. Until he silences out the Dr. Boom, but yeah, you're right. There is a little bit to no chance Killing All Day could win this game, maybe, possibly. It's gonna be tough. Like with the double Belcher, double Druid of the Claw, Druids, they generally have a favorable matchup versus um, face hunters just due to the fact that they have a lot of taunts and they have a lot of healing with the uh, Ancient of Lords. Oh no! Is there any way Stipper can get out of this? What's the draw? What do you think? Um. That's not it. Yeah, that's not it. He needed a um, a claw or possibly a savage roar. Savage roar if he had it, right? if he had a combo in hand, I think that would have been lethal. <sighs> Even Doctor Boom says no to mm -hmm. all the lethal chances. Two clutch Iron Beak Owls, and that is not going to be enough for damage off from lethal. Wrath is going to be played to just see what he could have gotten. <sighs> Not enough today for Snipper as Killing All Day seems to have closed out the matchup with one more spell. Yeah, if he had a, uh, if he drew a swipe instead of a wrath from the uh, Azure Drake, it would have been lethal. Let's see. Um, Force of Nature would have been lethal. If the boom bots were better, could have also been lethal too. For just a lot of outs. Also, if he drew like an Ancient of War instead of the Azur Drake, he could have healed himself up for next turn lethal, but it was just too little, too late. Yeah, too little, too late. So, recap the, the uh, matchup pretty much Priest versus 
Hunter was the second matchup, but Priest versus Mech Mage. Uh, Mech Mage in tournaments haven't been doing too too well when they don't get the card draw, but this one didn't have too much of a problem, right? Or what really happened during that matchup? Well, what like the big turnaround play was the um, sh the um, Shrinkmeister on the uh, Goblin Blast Mage into uh, Shadow Madness into Recombobulator. And getting a, a water elemental out of that. Why it like water elemental is so good versus uh, Mech Mage because it has that large health pool, that six health, which allows it to trade with a lot of Mech Mage minions. You know, like um, Mech Warper, Snow Chugger, um, and a lot of those low cost mechs. And the three attack is also like it hits that benchmark, the uh, threshold for a lot of um, you know piloted shredder and a lot of other minions that it can just kill off. So that was a good drop from the recombobulator. And at that point, he just the Megman just ran out of resources, and the priest was just healing out out of range. And there was really nothing the Mech Mage could do from that point on. In Priest versus Hunter, it was just... You can't really do as big of tempo swings with the board. Because... The Face Hunter is just going face. He, he doesn't really care about your board for the most part. Unless it has taunt, then he'll silence it. <laughs> but otherwise, it was just... But otherwise, the um, Face Hunter was just applying too much damage. Um, the, priest, the priests normally don't run that many taunts other than Sludge Belcher. Like, if this was the, uh, I think it's called the Jiao Soul, the, uh, the Chinese uh, priest list with Light Bombs and uh, Death Lords, then that one is, uh, has a very favorable matchup versus uh, Face Hunter. Because I think they also run, I think, one heal bot in that list too. So there's just a ton more healing and just a lot more anti-aggro in the list than in this, the normal priest list. And yeah, the story of the second game was just Face Hunter was just able to put out too much aggression, too much damage to the face, and the priest wasn't able to stabilize, unlike the first game. Third game, even though the Druid had a lot of um, taunts out, um, Kilinol Day was lucky enough to have both Owls versus the Druid. Like, uh, Owl is a very important card in the matchup versus Druid because they have a ton of taunts. Some um, Vultures, Druid with Claws. If you can nullify the taunt, then you're in a much better off position than you would be otherwise. And I kind of disagreed with his um, wild growth play turn two, with Snippers wild growth play turn, turn two. I would have played the um, the Wrath. I would have Wrathed for three on the um, Night Juggler instead of trading away the, uh, the uh, zombie chow. Then next turn, if I didn't have any turn three plays, I would have played the um, the shade. But he did have the shade already, so it was the wild growth wasn't really needed. And then he could have traded the zombie child later on for the wolf rider instead of the um, instead of using his shade of Naxxramas to trade. It's one of but that was just a case of a. Uh, Foresight. Hunter having all the right cards. Yeah, Hunter having all the right cards, Foresight for Druid to actually act upon it. Uh, I probably would have played it pretty much the same way as the Druid as well, so... Snipper had the right ideas, it just unfortunately the right cards came at the right times. Because Face Hunter is, uh, you know, goes face a little bit, so it's not that bad. And unfortunately yeah, that. but also if we uh, were to like see the situation, the turn before Killing All Day had lethal, um, 
In the end, Snippert was around 4 damage off of Lethal. Mm -hmm. So, I think the Boombox hit for 2 and 1 to the face. I thought it was 3 and 1, but something like that, yeah. Oh, 3 and 1. Yeah. Well, one of them was 1. Mm -hmm. And the other one was definitely not 4. Mm -hmm. So there was a chance, if you had better uh, luck with the Boombox hitting face, that he would have had Lethal from the Boombox only. But he also didn't have any Savage Roars or any Force of Nature. He didn't draw them. He didn't have the Swipe. Like, if he had any of those, that would also have been lethal. Which was just very unfortunate that he didn't draw them. Yeah, it's one of the unfortunate plays, but we are going to go for days for the next one. It's going to be two new cast participants. I think that's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. Nayer versus Tonky Castrid. Some interesting gameplay from them, and we're going to get that start up soon. In just a few, but we'll be hitting some music, playing right back into the next match in just a few. As we do recharge up onto the HSL. Do so remember, there is a shop that will recharge for you too. It's a lovely shop that you can pick up some nice dank shirts. So check it out, hsstarleaguecom shop. Again, thanks to our sponsors, Twitch, Rocket, MSI, Newegg, Blizzard, and Jinx for sponsoring out the HSL Spring Semester of the 2015 Hearthstone League. We'll be right back after this little short break. 